Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're gonna to turn this pallet that we found on the side of the road into this rusted coat rack. Most pallets I find are in pretty rough shape. The first thing I try to do is remove any of the staples that I can see in the wood. A pair of pliers acting as a pry tool will easily remove most of them. The deconstruction of a pallet can be super frustrating, so to keep my sanity and keep the project moving along, I'm going to go ahead and just cut the boards off at the inside of each 2x4. Roto Razor was kind enough to send me their 7-in-1 Platinum Plunge Saw to try out, so I thought why not try it on this project. With the guide attached and the carbide tip blade that comes with it, I'm able to get a straight clean cut the same as I would as if I used a circular saw. I'll be testing this Roto Razor saw out as much as I can for this build and hopefully be able to give you my honest opinion on the versatility of this saw. So far, so good. With both sides now cut, it's really easy just to use a pry bar and remove the boards from the middle 2x4. Now I can flip it over and remove the three boards in the bottom and save the middle 2x4 as the shelf for the coat rack. Okay, to remove the two remaining nails in each board, I just set up a scrap 2x4 on each side of the nail and use a claw hammer to pound the nails through, flip it over, and use the claw of the hammer to pull them out. Really simple, really easy. Now we're left with 10 clean three foot boards. However, we now need to get a straight cut on each side of them. To accomplish this, I'm gonna use a table saw and a piece of plywood that I know has a straight edge. This straight edge, I'll place up against the fence of my saw and by using double-sided tape, I can attach the pallet wood so it just overhangs the scrap plywood. Now I'll run both pieces straight through the saw. That'll give me a square edge on one side of the pallet wood. From there, I can use that square edge up against the fence and cut the other side of the pallet wood. I'm setting the fence at three inches from the blade for the final width of each one by. Out of the 10 boards, I picked six which I felt were the straightest and had the most unique patterns in the grain. From here, I'll use a speed square as my straight edge to cut all the boards in half. That'll give us 12 complete boards. And once again, I'll give the Roto Razor saw another go around. I love coming up with different ideas using pallets or even barn wood, and I know this rustic farmhouse look is not for everyone. Either you love it or you absolutely hate it. Hit me up in the comments if you wanna see more or less of this content. Do you love it or do you hate it? Here I've laid out the cut pallet boards into a random pattern that I think will look pretty cool when it's finished. Measuring across all 12 boards to get the length I need to cut the 2x4 shelf at and I will have to switch to the circular saw for this cut. I'll explain why later in the video. Find the best location for the 2x4 shelf by setting it in different positions. I find off-centering it gives it the best look but you can choose whatever you want. Once you find the best location for the shelf you can then mark the center of the 2x4 at each end. Then just flip the 2x4 over and use it as a straight edge to mark the line across all the boards. From there you want to pre-drill two holes through each board on the center line staying about one inch in from each edge. Turn the 2x4 on edge and spread out some glue. Now start at one end and screw the boards to the 2x4 until you make your way across all the boards. There's a couple of ways you can hang a piece like this. You can grab some of these heavy duty U-hooks, which work pretty good and they'll work just fine. However, I want mine to sit away from the wall to give it a bit more dimension. A French cleat system works well to accomplish this. If you don't know what a French cleat system is, it's made by cutting one piece of wood in the center at a 45 degree angle, basically creating two locking pieces. Here's a side view of a French cleat. I'll be mounting the French cleat directly over the screws we installed the shelf with. And then to balance out any of the wobble that will happen when it hangs on the wall, I'll add some scrap blocks throughout the back of the whole piece. A little bit of light sanding with 150 grit paper on my palm sander and we can start the finishing process. Now I'm going for a specific look on this coat rack so I'll be using multiple stains and different techniques to finish it. Starting off with a medium colored stain which is more or less a solid color stain, I'll cover the whole piece. Now I'll use a wire wheel in my drill to take out some of the solid color. You can see that I spent way more time removing the color from the top side than the lower side. There is a reason for this that I'll get into in a moment. 
Once I have it to this point, I can pull out my torch and start to burn from the lower side upward, including sections of the shelf. And finally, I'll use a lighter colored gel stain on the top section as well as the shelf again. This will help bring that rustic western look back into it. This piece is starting to look more like a piece of art than a coat rack, and it reminds me of a city in ruins rising from the ashes. So this is why I left more of the stain on the lower portion. Certainly not what I had planned, but when you're creating pieces out of old beat up pallets, you gotta kinda adapt as you go. I picked up some inexpensive hooks at the hardware store and I'm just placing them at random positions on the lower section. Now all that's left to do is install the other side of the French cleat to the wall using a level, making sure to hit the studs in the wall. Pretty happy with the way that coat rack turned out. Uh, a little different than I thought it was going to by the end of it, but all in all it looks really good. And as for the roto razor saw, this is a great little DIY saw for projects like this. And I am looking forward to testing it out on a few more project builds that we're doing in the future. And there are a bunch of companies that sell these circular saws. Um, Makita makes a cordless one. I think Rockwell makes one. DeWalt makes a cordless one. Uh, Skill makes one. They look like they're pretty popular. This is the first one I've ever had. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, the depth of the plunge was not as deep as I thought it was, and that was why I had to use my circular saw for the two x four cut. But for cutting plywood or one bys, this is a great little saw. So if you wanna pick one of these up for yourself or as a gift for the holidays, make sure you use my link in the description. You can save 40 bucks on the purchase of it. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, keep on building. Peace.